previously on Holly. Oh, the people at my church warned me about you when they found out I was changing to the school. What exactly did they tell you? That you're a tranny. I'm sorry, what did you call me? Tranny, I mean, you are, aren't you? Here we go again. It is the attitude that you and people like you have that is causing the world's problems. If you were more accepting, there would be no war. There would be no discrimination. But no. Someone always has to think they're better than someone else. Hello? Hey. Oh, hey, Ashton. What's up? I need someone to talk to. My parents are fighting down the hall again. Their divorce isn't going well, then. No. You're my boyfriend, and you're never around. You're supposed to support me, and you never support me. No one supports me. I'm all alone. Do you know how that feels? As he is wandering down the hall, looking for a place to sit, he spots Ashton sitting in a classroom, eating lunch all by her lonesome. Matt opens the door to the classroom and walks in. Hey. What are you doing here? Why aren't you eating with any of your friends? I prefer to eat alone. Is that really the reason? My life sucks, okay? My parents are separated and I have no true friends. No one that really cares enough to listen to how I feel anyway. And because of that, I keep pushing people away. It's better to be alone than to be hurt. And the only thing, the only thing I have is God and my religious beliefs that give me some kind of hope. But then people like you go and criticize me for stuff like that too. People like me? You technically started with the insults. Look, you just don't get it. If you went to church, you'd understand. And if you took time to talk to Holly rather than slander her, you'd understand. Then maybe that's what we should do. I might have been a bit radical when it came to expressing my thoughts on Christianity the first time I met you. So what did you think of Holly? I misjudged her. Scene 1. Exterior. Misty open area. Night. Holly is standing around in an open place filled with fog. She can't see a thing. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? Something swishes past Holly. Who's there? Weston comes out of the shadows. Weston? Something is coming, Holly. This must be a dream. You may be dreaming, but this is very real. I'm warning you. What? A great evil is coming to the world. You cannot let that happen. You must stop it. Holly, no matter what you do, you cannot use ta- Something pulls Weston into the mist. Ah! Weston! Holly wakes up in her bed, sweating. What the hell? The face is a map of the world, is a map of the world. You can see she's a beautiful girl, she's a beautiful girl. Everything around her is a silver pool of light. People who's around to feel the benefit of it and makes you count. Jones, you captivated in a pound. Suddenly I see, this is what I want to be. Suddenly I see, why the hell it means so much to me. This is what I want to be. Suddenly I see, why the hell it means so much to me. Scene 2, Interior, Martin House, Day. Holly is walking around the house following Matt. Well? Well what? What do you think about the dream? It sounds like it was scary. That's it? That's all you have for me? Yeah, why? I believe that I psychoanalyzed your dreams many times, like the dancing carrots, or the one where I was a princess that you needed to rescue, or- Um, you said that the dancing carrots were my subconscious desire for better vision. I highly doubt that's right. Well, I am still fairly confident in my assessment. So, come on, psychoanalyze my dream. Okay, so maybe you're still upset about Weston's death? Or maybe death scares you and you're worried about your mortality? If Weston died, maybe you're worried you're next? Yeah, maybe. Was that psychoanalysis enough? Yeah, I think that'll suffice. Thank you. No problem. So are you ready for the big class field trip? The field trip to the NASA facility in Florida? Yeah, I can't wait. You know me, I love astronomy and physics and stuff like that. Well, the bus does leave in an hour. Are you all packed? Yeah, I am. Are you ready to go? You bet. Scene three, exterior, parking lot, day. Holly and Matt arrive with their bags. All right, everyone. Please put your luggage in the bottom of the bus. You are not allowed any carry-on bags. Anything you bring on should be in your hands. 
Let's get a move on, people. Ten minutes until we head out. Matt and Holly put their bags in the bottom of the bus and climb aboard. They sit next to each other. So what did you think of last week's episode of Supernatural? Just when you think they've run out of ideas on that show, they do something like find a way to resurrect Ruby. I know, right? That came out of nowhere. It seems like that show is going to go on forever. Ashton comes and sits down next to the two of them. Hey guys! Ashton, what's up? Not too much. Are you excited for this trip? Yeah, it should be neat. I'm just so glad it gets me out of the house and away from my sparring parents. Last night, my mom shouted at my dad on the phone over why he didn't come over to cut the grass like he said he would. Separated parents can be so annoying, especially when one acts like she's helpless and can't do anything herself. Sorry, that must suck. That's okay. At least I have people I can talk to about it now. My friends at church would tell me to just pray, which I do, but I would also like them to listen too, you know? Yeah, I know. Listening is important. I remember vaguely when my dad left my mom after she found out I had gender dysphoria. It sucked. But I was glad that I had Matt there to talk to. So just know, we are here to talk about it if you want to. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, if you want to talk, we're here. But I'm mostly glad that we get out of normal school for three days. I hate school so much. Oh, so true, too. Is that senioritis that I'm hearing? A little bit, yes. The other part being that I just don't like having my knowledge painstakingly tested all the time. Well, nevertheless, we only have a few more months until we are done with this stuff for good. And by for good, you mean we still have four more years of college. Exactly. Oh, cheer up. I'm sure college is going to be fun. I doubt that, but okay. Yeah, you'll get to meet a bunch of new people. I don't want to meet a bunch of new people. I'm ready to start my life, and I already like the friends that I have. Oh, Matt. Whatever am I going to do with you? You can do whatever you want with me. I'll be down for it. Matt winks at Holly. Matt! Holly shoves him. What can I say? I'm a hormonal teenager. You're hormonal? I'm the one taking estrogen with a tea blocker in my arm. I should be the hormonal one. Yeah, I know. Sometimes my flirtatious side gets a little carried away. Mm-hmm. Oh, I completely forgot. I meant to apologize about bringing Alex as my partner to the barbecue. It was mean, it was spiteful, and it was unnecessary. Alex may look nice on the surface, but can be really heartless. I'm sorry. It's no problem. All's forgiven. Holden gets on the bus. All right, everyone. We're going to do a quick roll call to make sure that everyone is here, and then we'll be on our way. Be quiet and pay attention to make sure your name is called. Charles Abraham. Scene 4. Interior. NASA. Day. The senior class all piles into a huge conference-like room, ready to listen to a presentation. A NASA employee walks up to the podium in the front of the room, standing before all of the students in the seats. Hello everyone. Welcome to NASA. My name is Kevin. It is a pleasure to look at all your bright, smiling faces, ready to learn about the inner workings of the modern NASA's headquarters. Everyone just blankly stares at him. All right then. So, you all know our history for the most part. In the 60s, NASA started to try and put a man on the moon. We ultimately succeeded in 1969 and followed that moon landing with many others. Eventually, the big idea of lunar exploration lost its drive and we began working on shuttles and doing work for an international space station, but even that lost its drive. With NASA slowing down to just monitoring satellites we sent to space over the decades, we decided to experiment with the prospects of time travel, and earlier this year, we attempted our first manned mission through time. However, we still have yet to recover the lost time traveler, and as of currently, we are shutting down the project. Holly raises her hand. Yes, you in the back. So, will there be no rescue mission to find Jack Hawthorne? At the moment, no. Why? Our top scientists are still trying to figure out what went wrong. There were many variables, but now they are beginning to think that it has something to do with the electron diffusion mechanism. But as the funding for the project has just been shut down, we don't know if we will ever know the answer as to what caused the accident. Ugh, that's a shame. If you are curious, the math used is now available to the public. You are more than welcome to look at it after the presentation. That sounds cool. Thank you. So, now that our time travel initiative has been shut down, 
NASA is once again looking into more travel to the moon and possibly other planets. There is a time lapse to the end of the presentation. The NASA employee comes up to Holly. Here are those mathematical equations. The NASA employee hands her a sheet of paper and walks off. Cool. Thank you. Matt and Ashton crowd around Holly. Guys, a little space here? Sorry. We're all curious about it. Wow. This is some really complicated stuff. Do you understand any of it? Bits and pieces. I'm good at math, but nowhere near this good. If Weston were here... Weston was a genius with math. I'm sure that she would have been able to understand this much better than me. Yeah, I wish I had gotten to know her. If she was anything like either of you, I'm sure she was someone special. She was. I'll always miss her. So, want to get on with the self-guided tour? Sure. I hear they have a piece of the moon rock that we can go touch in one exhibit. Oh yay. Something that millions of people have probably laid their hands on. Just my idea of fun. Well, you don't have to touch it, but I want to. Let's get going, shall we? Absolutely. You have the map. Lead on. Holly takes out her map and begins to walk in one direction. Ashton and Matt follow her. Scene 5. Interior. Hotel. Night. Holly and Matt are walking down the hallway of the hotel. So Matt, who are you rooming with? Wilbur and Reese. You? I'm all by my lonesome. Really? Why? Oh, you know, it's because I'm trans. No one wanted to room with me, and the school thought it would be best to have me sleep in my own room. That sucks. Did your mom complain? Of course she did, but she didn't win the battle. But it's okay, Matt. I mean, transgender people can go to the bathroom they identify with now, but they can't room with people they identify with? Don't you think that's wrong? Matt, it doesn't matter to me. As times change, they'll get it, and I will be able to room with other girls, not because of a law, but because they are comfortable with who I am. Take Ashton, for example. She used to not get it. In fact, I still don't think she gets it, but that isn't the point, Matt. The point is that she eventually began to see me as just another person and not some sort of freak. And we found out that despite disagreeing on one thing, we got along on so many other levels. That's what I want. In time, people will become more tolerant and accepting, not because of being forced to over a law, but because they will see I am just like everyone else. That's why I'm not spiteful. Ashton still thinks that being transgender is wrong. It's a part of her religious beliefs, but she doesn't get all upset over it. People can still be friends despite a difference like that. People can be tolerant. Not everyone is going to agree on everything, and once people can see that, the better the world is going to be. That's the only way the LGBT community and religion will work in the same space. There has to be a willingness to tolerate on both sides, not necessarily accept with open arms, but to know that there are some things to leave alone and to just let be. If someone is Christian, I'm not going to insult them. They have a right to believe what they want to believe. I hope that they would do the same for me. I wouldn't want someone trying to insult me over what I believe is right. Why would I put that on someone else? The only way it will work is if people show some sort of tolerance. And people can argue all they want and say that Christianity is evil and has bad values, but people can say the same for the LGBT community. But if you look at it from a non-biased view, both have had times where they've been hurtful and mean. But guess what? As both sides can use hate and cruelty, they're also capable of love. I don't agree with some parts of Christianity, but I'm not one to go tell people that. That shouldn't be the way it is. Every time a controversial issue comes up, people have to turn it into a pissing contest. Whether it be about gay marriage or women's rights, it all has to be blown out of proportion. At least by now you'd think people could be more civilized about this, but they aren't. If people just sat and listened instead of accusing, then they would only see that there's more than meets the eye on both sides. That their original perceptions may be wrong. They may not necessarily agree still, but they would have some sort of better understanding of why that person feels the way they do. That is how this should work. Forcing people to believe in something they don't want to believe in will not get anyone anywhere. But tolerating one another will at least allow both to have some chance of living happily with no interference and no need for laws dictating one point of view to believe in another. If one or both sides view hate, nothing will get done, except there will be devastation and only one winner. And it doesn't have to be that way. There's room for both religion and the LGBT community. People just have to see it. Wow, I never really thought. Good night, Matt. I'll see you in the morning. But Holly? Yes, Matt? 
If you so strongly believe in tolerance, why aren't you going to the room with the other girls? Shouldn't you want them to tolerate you by showing them you are a girl, like them? By me choosing not to put up a fight, it's showing them that I am tolerant of them. If I tried to room with them, it would be forcing them into it, and that wouldn't be right. But I'm sure that they'll come to not necessarily accept or understand, but tolerate me. Just like Ashton did. What makes you so sure? Because if you show that you are willing to give, and to at least listen to another person's view, and if you show them compassion, then they're more likely to do the same for you. That sounds like good advice for anyone when it comes to anything. Yeah, I think it is good advice. It's an old advice rule from almost every religion known to man. The golden rule. Do unto others what you want them to do to you. This is the meaning of the law of Moses and the teaching of the prophets. Matthew 7, 12. Jesus' version of the rule. Huh. If every religion has a rule like that, then there must be something to it, right? Yeah. And with listening and tolerance can also come understanding. I may not agree with all of the Bible, but I agree with that part especially. What about Ashton, though? She didn't want a room with you? She was already assigned a rooming, remember? And she tried to convince the girls she had in a room to make room for one more, but they didn't want to. But that's fine. As I've said, people will be comfortable around me when they decide to be. Yeah. Okay. Good night, Matt. Good night, Holly. I'll see you in the morning. Matt walks off. Holly walks to her solitary room, opens the door, and walks in. She stands there. I think Holden Caulfield had it wrong. At some point, everybody falls and loses that innocence, the ability to see the world without blinders or without stereotypes. At one point, we all become biased, judging adults who now care what someone's religion or gender is, and we make decisions based on that and not based on the true hearts of the person. But that's okay, because everybody falls. But it isn't the fall that we should be worried about. What defines us is whether or not we choose to try and get back up and see the heart in people once again, and not judge someone based on one thing, but on their true, unfiltered personality and character.